I really appreciate the opportunity to uh, speak to you um, uh, briefly this morning and uh, also really appreciate the opportunity to be in the uh, session, uh, excellent session, um, I've just been in looking at how we can build an evidence base that can influence politicians. And I want to thank Ben Page for Ipsos Mori. Ben, are you still in the room? No. Because Ben finished his contribution by saying that politi politicians are thick-skinned, <laughs> uh, single-minded, um, and only think about the short term. And, uh, and I did want to say that actually having spent 12 years as a national politician in Wales and 10 years previously as a local politician, that is not my experience. But I think that there is a cute trick, as it were, to how sectors can engage and influence politicians effectively. And in the context of sustainable development, it's a trick that urgently uh, needs to be explored and taken forward. And what I wanted to do, and I think slides are going to be made available from this conference to conference goers anyway, so I'm not going to do the full presentation uh, I was going to give you, but what I thought it would be useful to do is to just say a little bit about how the acquisition of evidence and also um, the consensual approach around sustainable development from all parties in Wales as a concept that needed to be uh, explored and grown has helped Wales move in a particular direction and hopefully also to endorse the call I heard from the chair when I first walked in that there is a huge research opportunity for you all in looking at what is happening across the UK at the moment. up how it will promote sustainable development and the exercise of its functions. So just hang on to that word promote. An annual report to the Assembly and then any, any incoming administration was charged with the responsibility of doing an effectiveness review um, of, uh, of, it, of its previous scheme. The definition that Wales um, used was the Brundtland uh, definition and is still uh, the Brundtland definition. I think though sometimes people forget the two sub-clauses of the uh, Brundtland definition. The idea that this is a huge social justice agenda, the concept of needs, the essential needs of the world's poor, and the idea of limitations imposed by the state. And what was interesting to me is that, you know, as somebody who, who in Wales um, introduced <coughs> Uh, I suppose what some people might call a fairly draconian recycling agenda. When I became minister, we were behind all other parts of the United Kingdom. We did not have buy-in from our local authorities, um, but we worked with them, and we decided to legislate to ensure that 70% of the waste stream would be recycled by 2025 on mandatory targets and zero waste by 2050. And that legislation has meant new job opportunities, that legislation has meant a better performance in Wales than any other part of the United Kingdom and is likely to mean no infraction from Wales in terms of Europe. So actually, the legislation, um, when the voluntary activity didn't work, has led to positive environmental, um, social and economic outcomes. So I actually think there is a very important role for government on the basis of evidence 
to intervene where appropriate in the, uh, in the interests of sustainable development. And it was higher education's research input that told us, in the waste terms, that we would get better outcomes, better economic, social and environmental outcomes um, by going down this route. And therefore, in Wales, we had all party support for the delivery of that agenda. You know all about the shared framework, the important role of the Sustainable uh, Development Commission, and um, using sound science responsibly and promoting good governance seem to me to be terrifically important here. Um, because obviously we often talk about the three pillars in the context of sustainable development, but actually governance and how we deliver a values framework around what we do is also very important. Because politicians are guided by principles, by value judgments, by manifestos. That's their daily life. So you, you can't just aim to use evidence uh, in terms of an intervention. You also have to look at how you can feed, support, demonstrate successes around those other key principles. Um, our current scheme, I'm sure Kai uh, talked about, One Wales, One Planet, it's, it's the current scheme at the moment, um, again, and there's a number of key sustainability drivers uh, in Wales, which include the Climate Change Commission making its own commitments about targets of carbon uh, reduction. And interestingly, education for sustainable development and global citizenship became a statutory part of the Welsh curriculum uh, in, in 2006. There's five key themes from the Education for Sustainable Development and Global Citizenship Action Plan, very strongly supported. Government put an action plan together. Um, the uh, inspection regime, which is called ESTIN in Wales, um, uh, strongly uh, endorsed that action plan. Uh, ESTIN inspected all education sectors from early years through to higher education around its delivery of education for sustainable development and global citizenship. But when I left the ministry, the education ministry, which is my first ministry, in 2007, and the SDGC remained in that ministry, what we then realised much later was that when, although it was a past statutory part of the Welsh curriculum and therefore could be seen to be mainstreamed in the same way as the Minister has just described, when government was not keeping its foot on the pedal of delivery of the targets, when government was not being absolutely clear about what was required in the context of education for sustainable development and global citizenship, the report that is just go, about to go back to the UN, which has been compiled by higher education in Wales, says that at that point, the commitment slipped. So there is a clear relationship between government's activity in the context of any agenda and the way in which people in a country respond to that agenda. Where there is less activity, and government is not seen to be prioritising, then those people who are not interested in that agenda will always pull away. And that's where evidence base becomes very important. But I think that just to get us to where we are now, do the existing arrangements work? As I asked you to notice, the existing duty requires ministers to promote sustainable development in everything that they do, not achieve sustainable development. And of course, we can promote it just by saying something. Um, it does not mean that that will change in any way what moves forward. There is no legal definition of sustainable development in Wales. And although people buy into that Brundtland definition, it's not in itself sufficient as a legal definition because it is too broad. The Wales Audit Office, when it looked at the practices of the government, found that sustainable development was not embedded in government practice, um, and that no mechanisms had been institutionalised across government through the civil service to embed sustainable development in government practice. And the WWF, 
um, separately commissioned a policy report from an independent researcher who found that sustainable development was not embedded across all portfolios. So we had a government which had made a commitment through One Wales, One Planet to put sustainable development at the heart of what they did. We had a government oper operating to a legal duty to have a scheme which was challenged in the Assembly annually. We had a sustainable development commissioner in Wales who morphed into a commissioner for sustainable futures. And yet in 2010, early 2011, that was the case. So, I thought that what we needed to do in the context of Wales was to say, actually, we as politicians are not interested in short-termism. We need to look at ways of enshrining sustainable development into everything that is done in Wales. And therefore, governments of the future will all have this responsibility of whatever political hue. They've already bought in in principle to the idea that the assembly is different because it has a duty around promoting sustainable development that all parties sign up to. So this is the next logical stage. If we don't have existing arrangements working, we need to move forward. And it needs to be about the challenges for the future. It is about our children's children, but in a sense that's quite a trite way of saying what we need to do for the future, for ourselves for the future, as well as the survival uh, and quality of life of future um, generations. I think what's interesting is therefore is the language of the First Minister in Wales this year, you will see there. Our economic approach will not just be about weathering the current storm, although that remains a priority, but our daily decisions will be made in line with delivering a sustainable economy that delivers for our children a legacy that will outlive <coughs> us all. And because there is manifesto-led government in Wales, the way to ensure that this would happen was to put it in the manifesto. So I wrote it into the manifesto, the idea that there would be a legislative commitment that sustainable development would become the central organising principle of the Welsh Government and public bodies in Wales, and there would be an independent sustainable development body for Wales. The first consultation has just finished. The white paper consultation is coming out on the 3rd of December. So I'm sure you'll be interested in what, what a country is doing to take that commitment forward. This is a government slide showing where the government sees the outcome of sustainable development in terms of economic, um, social and environmental well-being. Putting well-being, and I'm sure Clive talked a lot about that, um, uh, at the heart of that agenda. But interestingly enough, there is a current definition of sustainable development in Wales that sits inside Planning Policy Wales, which has just been updated this month. So this is an existing legal definition of sustainable development. And the voluntary sector and the NGOs in Wales checked it through a barrister recently to see whether or not it was sufficient to be a, uh, uh, to be a candidate for an overarching definition for sustainable uh, development uh, in Wales for the future. And in fact, it was confirmed that it could uh, be taken forward in that way. I'm not advocating it, I have to say, um, uh, explicitly, because that definition was crafted for the delivery of the One Wales, One Planet agenda, was not crafted in terms of the delivery of a legislative uh, arrangement around sustainable development. But I think the important um, element is that if we in the UK end up with a legal de definition of sustainable development in one part of the United Kingdom, where that definition will then apply to every single piece of legislation in relation to Wales that uses the term sustainable development, that has major consequences for thinking around sustainable development in other parts of the UK for the future. And I'll just finish there. I mean, that's, that's me. If you want to look up what we're doing in Trinity St David University, where we're taking those principles and institutionalising sustainability through our institution, because we also believe fundamentally that we can't just have an institute 
uh, which delivers on these principles. But that if we really are going to deliver on this in a country committed to it, we also have to institutionalise it in everything that we do, in our curriculum, in our behaviour, in our partnerships, uh, in what we do um, around environmental management and anything else. And I'd just like to finish with uh, a quote from Gandhi. First they laugh at you, then they ignore you, then they fight you, then you win. I think we're probably in the ignoring <laughs> part of the agenda at the moment. Um, and maybe we just might be moving in to a bit of a fight. But we will win because we have to. Because it is singularly, in my view, the most important agenda facing any politician and the whole of the research community for the future. Thank you.